Hello guys, we are back with our next tutorial. In this tutorial, let's see all about asymptotic notations. Guys, this is one of the most important topic, guys. Okay, it justifies the complexity of a program to justify its complexity or time variance of anything. You will be using these kind of notations. So nothing but asymptotic means approximation. You'll be giving the approximate values like that. So in this analysis, to analyze only the core logic. So it mainly targets the main block of code. So these are furtherly divided into three types. One of them is big O, another one is omega and the another one is theta. So those symbols are nothing but big O means O, omega means omega, theta means theta. So big O gives the maximum value, omega gives the minimum value, theta gives the average value. So we'll be going in depth in each of them, don't worry. Okay. So basically big O, Okay, let me search for a pen. Yeah, I just got it. Fine. So big O, O or maximum or upper boundary. I hope you understood all the names of that. So it is defined as f of n is equals to big O of g of n if and only if such that c comma n naught belongs to f of n less than c into g of n for all n greater than or equal to n naught. This is how the statement is defined, guys. So here, this will be our main condition. Whatever, you may you may forget these all things for problem, that's fine. That's fine, but you should remember this formula for problems. If you want to write the statement, everything is must. Writing this will not give you marks. You should write the whole statement perfectly. Okay, so here, if you check here carefully, here f of n is less than c into g of n, right? Okay, now we will be drawing a graph basically. So just let me draw it right beside it so that you can just compare it so our normal curve will be f of n and this will be your program variation or something whatever you may think okay so it's going to end somewhere like this so where it ends it will be our n naught and from here here fn is less so c into g of n will be at the top of it so this will be y and this will be x this is input this is time variance so now i hope you even got a small idea Okay, let us go through a problem so that it will be clear for you. So he gave proof to n square plus 1 is equal to big O of n square. From the question itself, we can say that this is f of n and this is g of n, right? Okay, so the condition is nothing but f of n less than c into g of n, right guys? Okay, now let us go through the solution. So basically, I'll be drawing here only guys. Okay, let, shall I do a rough book? Okay, just give me a second. Okay. So now I'll be writing the equation that is nothing but 2n square plus 1 less than or equal to c into g of n. So I'll be initially g, c into g of n, g of n I can write value, right? So n square. So now I'll be initializing n values, guys. n is equals to 1. So I'm going to get 3 less, 3 less than c. So what should be the value to satisfy this? If c is equals to 1, no. c is equals to 2, no. How I'm saying no means 3 less than, 3 is less than 1, no. 3 is less than 2, no. So c is equals to 3, c is less than or equal to 3, that is true. So the value is nothing but n is equals to 1 and c is equals to 3. We got the values perfectly. So now draw the graph, that's it, there is nothing much to do guys. n is equals to what we got 1. And the above graph, c is nothing but we got 3. 3 into n square, we got 2n square plus 1. This will be the input, this will be the output y, that is, sorry, output not, that's the time variance, this is the input. So now I hope everyone got a small idea on this. So now let us go to one more example that we'll, we can directly solve guys these problems. So basically I have told you that it should be less than or equals to, right? So if the both the values are same, it is the statement is true guys. Big O will be true. If the G of N value is more, also it is true as it will be the maximum boundary. If the solution is less N square and N, this is not going to be a true situation. Okay, now let us go through omega. Guys, there is no change between uh, the previous one and this, the big O and omega. The, bo the both are similar, but only a small condition change. In that, f of n is less. In this, g of n is less. That's it. So now, same condition, f of n is equal to big O of g of n, if and only if, for all c, comma n belongs to f of n greater than or equal to c into g of n, for all n greater than or equal to n naught. So now you'll be drawing the same graph, but if you consider here, c of n is less than g of sorry okay so we'll be writing the c of n above and g of n below got it so this will be the input this will be the time variance t 
so now you'll be taking the same problem I'll, i took the same problem guys so now i have directly substituted so that in the initial stage only i got here i'll be getting three greater than in the first case only one so i directly got the value so here it will be one and here it will be okay three and square right yep i forgot this three and square so now we managed to get the graph so now further moving on to the basic example that is nothing but these both are equal so it is possible this is less that is possible as this is the minimum case this is more this is not possible okay i hope you got a small idea now let us go through theta theta is one of the most easiest guys it is just the mixture of both omega and big o excuse me okay so basically f of n is equals to theta of g of n if and only if c1 comma c2 comma n not for all c n c2 g of n less than or equal to f of n less than or equal to c into g of n got it okay so basically this is one of the easiest way guys so n greater than n not for all okay that's fine so the graph will be like this f of n will be in the middle this will be up this will be down okay in the previous ones we got we can able to do equal condition or less or equal right excuse me <clears throat> we are able to do any one but in this it is compulsory that they both should be equal only then the condition will be satisfied in any other condition it is not satisfied so now i hope everyone is now clear with this asymptotic notations in the next tutorial we will be going through space and time complexity thank you thanks for watching